Hey everybody, it's Philip from Steveson Motor Co. and this video is going to be a step-by-step -step guide on how to install our D16 subframe kit. Uh, we're going to assume that you have basic mechanical knowledge. I'm not going to go through every little detail here, but I'm just going to give you some tips and tricks along the way. First thing we're going to do is drain all of the fluids out of the car. This uh, includes the engine oil, the uh, brake fluid, and the gasoline. So this is just like a normal oil change, just pop the oil filter out, the oil uh, fill cap out, drain the coolant. And we're draining the brake fluid here. To drain the brake fluid, we find it easiest to use our uh, pressure pump. This way we don't have to have someone sit inside the car. So we pressurize the system and then uh, crack the bleeder. Now we're going to drain the fuel from the car. We found that the cleanest way of doing this is to use a uh, fitting onto the fuel line and then using our power probe, we probe into the fuel pump relay and use the actual pump that's in the car to pump gas out into a jerry can. It takes a little while but this uh, is the cleanest and easiest way to do this system. Now we're going to be replacing the fuel pump. So the factory SPI and MPI fuel pumps do not have enough volume or flow to handle the Honda engine. So even if you have a fuel injected car, you are going to need to swap the pump to a Honda one. I just recommend always getting the Honda pump that is specific to the year of the engine you're using. We usually use D16Y8s, which would be in a 96 to 2000 Honda Civic fuel pump. But luckily, as you will see, the Honda pumps bolt right on to the mini fuel pump assembly. So take the gas tank out, take the factory pump out. Here we have the Honda pump. It is designed to be used on a Honda, obviously, so a little bit of modification is necessary. Just have to cut down that rubber line. But as you'll see, it pretty much bolts right on. Here we got it installed and everything tightened up. I like to run the wiring like the factory mini one does. So plug it in. And then you'll see me wrap the wiring several times around the pipes here. Through the middle and then up to the spade terminals at the bottom of the sender. reinstalling it. If you have a carbureted mini that you were doing the swap on and you're going to be using fuel injection, you will need to buy a fuel injection tank, one from either an SPI or an MPI mini. You can also use a fuel cell if that suits you better. Next we're going to be removing all the ancillaries of the car. Safety first, first thing. Remove the negative terminal of the battery. Now 
Now we're going to take the shifter out, put the car in reverse, and you can take off the two screws that hold the shifter housing on. By putting it into reverse, it allows you to access the roll pin that we will be punching out later. Here we see Chris just removing the stabilizer rod. And that's the roll pin I was speaking about. It's the one closest to the transmission. Once it's in reverse, that's accessible and you can knock it out with a punch. Now you can wiggle out the factory shifter. Next, we're taking out the header. On the fuel injected cars, it's a two beast design, so just remove the three bolts at the halfway point and then remove it from the exhaust. We like to reuse the exhausts on our Honda Swap cars, so we just leave that one in place. Next, we're taking out the front shocks. The front suspension is connected both to the body and to the subframe, so those need to be removed but you can reuse them afterwards. We didn't show it, but you also want to take out the track rod ends from the steering rack, from the arms. Essentially anything that's connecting the body of the car to the subframe. Here we're removing the lower engine mounts, or subframe mounts. We did the front one first, now we're doing the back one. All the while, important to note that the upper big tower bolts are still in place. That's what's actually holding the subframe up at the moment. Now we're supporting the bottom of the engine. You can do this with floor jack or with a motorcycle jack. And once everything's supported, then you can remove the two big tower bolts that are holding the subframe into the car. Go little by little, left to right, to make sure everything kind of descends evenly. Just like that, everything should come out the bottom. Just take your time, go slow, make sure that there's nothing still connected. Make sure you've got the uh, electrical system completely removed, speedometer cable, all the little accessories like that. And you can see how much of the subframe we left intact there, makes it really easy. Now that everything's out, you're going to want to prep the engine bay for the Honda, and this means trimming the inner wings. So you can see here, where I'm showing we're going to need to cut, both on the left and right side of the car. Different year cars will have different inner wing, but they will all need to be cut out in the same place. See I'm marking just with a Sharpie here. Keep it nice and tight to the corners there. It makes it look really clean when it's all done. We like to use an angle grinder for this, the cutoff wheel, but you can do it with any tool that suits you. Especially with the curves, you want to take your time and do several cuts. as close to the edge as you can for a clean look. You'll see when we cut this one out that we left the area right where the support for the hood prop goes. Depending on the year of the car, it will have a little bracket that can hold the hood prop and there isn't a ton of clearance issue there so you can leave that in place so you have somewhere to put the hood prop. You can see that tab there that we left.
that's what the cut looks like. Now we're just going to clean it up with a flapper disc on the grinder. Make sure there's no sharp edges, make sure it's all nice and straight. Then we're just taking a wire wheel and cleaning up the engine bay. This is a good time to repaint the engine bay, which is something we usually do if the car isn't getting a full body work job. This wire wheel will get rid of the rust. You see there also on the left that we cut off the tab that holds the engine steady. That engine steady tab uh, won't be ne needed with the Honda swap, so just cut that off. On this car we also took some time and we plugged some of the holes in the firewall that won't be necessary anymore just to clean it up hit with some primer you can also see that our fuel lines are still in place uh, if you've got a fuel injected car you're gonna leave all the fuel lines and reuse them to the correct size and you can reuse all the lines without having to make any which is a nice benefit how it looks from the front side. If you need any details on where you need to cut for the lower half, I'll take a look at that as well. It's all cleaned up. Looking good. All right, so now we're gonna show you how to actually install the subframe. You'll see we've swapped the suspension, uh, the cones, the trumpets, the upper control arms, bump stops onto the new subframe, the rear half of the new subframe. You want to install the left side engine mount with the long bolt first before you put it up because this bolt is, will get in the way of the uh, headlight bucket. So make sure to install that first and just put it loosely. Here I'm installing the lower subframe mounts. These are factory mini units. Same thing with the front one. You can reuse all factory stuff if you want. We always like to use the solid subframes and solid subframe mounts. That's just an example of how we run the wiring. Now we've got the rear half of the subframe ready to go. It's going to drop it into the car. And you can see because it is built off of a factory mini subframe, it aligns perfectly. Use the stock bolts there and the solid subframe mounts. Get those in. This is the one of the benefits to our subframe is it's so easy to install because you don't need to install the subframe with the engine attached and you don't even need the front half of the subframe in. And here I'm installing the lower bolts to the subframe mounts. Notice that the subframe mounts here are, are loose still. And this is to allow the bolts to slide in nice and easy. If you find that yours uh, are not going in properly, Run a drill through there and make sure that everything is fitting really nicely. Here we're just torquing the upper mounts. It is important to torque the upper mounts first because if you tighten the bottom and then you torque the top, you can twist that rear half of the subframe just slightly enough to make it difficult to put the front half of the subframe, which we'll be doing in a later video. Now that the upper ones are torqued, tightening up the bottom, making sure everything's tight. I like to use nylocks down here. All right, that's it. That's what the back half of the subframe looks like. Stay tuned for the next video where we'll show you how to install the engine as well as the front half of the subframe. Thanks for watching.